What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with our statistics unit. And today we are asking the all important question what is a statistical question? So let's look at the data and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to recognize the differences between a statistical question and a non statistical question. So let's take a look at our math vocabulary. So here we have our math vocabulary, and we're going to be looking at three different math words today that are kind of the introduction to our entire statistics unit. That's why this is lesson number one in our statistics unit. If you do not have notes, by the way, to write these math vocabularies down, you can check the description to the video, and you will find a link to the notes that you can either write on online or print off and have for yourself. So the first one is statistics. What is statistics? Statistics is the study of how to collect, analyze, summarize, and present data. Okay, and there's a lot of different definitions out there about what statistics is. But for us, basically, we're going to be collecting data. We want to look at ways to analyze it, to summarize it, to make inferences about it, and then how to present it visually so that other people can see our conclusions that we're making. Which leads us into a statistical question. So you have to have data to collect, right? So a statistical question is obviously a question, and it has to have two things. One, it can be answered by collecting data, and two, it has to have variability in the data, which leads us to our next one. Okay, well, if it has to have variability in the data, what is variability? It's a tricky word for me to say. So if I mess it up, just a little bit of grace, and we'll move on. So variability is the differences in the data collected. This can also be called dispersion or spread. So all three of those terms are referring to the differences in data that's being collected. Let's take a deeper dive into variability. So just like we said, variability is when you're collecting data and there's going to be differences in the data, right? If you're collecting data to answer questions such as what is the height of everybody in the classroom, there's going to be differences, right? Not all the answers are going to be the same. Now, there are two different types of variation. So here we have a tree map. And our, the first one is induced variation. And induced variation is created due to differences in data collection. So we are making a variation. An example of this would be maybe we're doing a sleep study, and we have two different groups. And in one of the groups, we turn the lights on. In another group, we turn the lights off. And we're testing how long it takes them to fall asleep. We know that we have induced differences or variability by having one light on and one light off, right? We're creating differences in that data collection. Now, the other type of variation is natural. And this is the one we're going to be dealing with in all of our lessons. Everything we're going to be doing is going to be dealing with natural variation and not induced but I want to make sure I introduce both of those. Natural variation occurs when members of a population are different, right? So if you ask everybody what their favorite stuffed animal is, not everyone's the same. Everybody's going to have a different answer, okay? We call that natural variation. If we go back to the height question, obviously not everybody in a population of people is the same exact height. And the differences that we would see in different people's answers we call natural variation. So these are the two types of variation. These are the two different ways that we're going to get differences in our answers and in the data we're collecting for different questions. And I want to credit the North Carolina DPI sixth grade unpacking document for these definitions. So that way I am not under any copyright infringement. Now let's really get to the point of this lesson. Statistical questions versus non-statistical questions. So here we have a tree map. Our topic is questions. And there are two different types of questions that we're going to be talking about statistical questions and non-statistical questions, all right? Everything that we're going to be doing in this unit has to do with statistics. So we want to know, okay, what is a statistical question? There are two different things that make a question statistical. One, the data will have variability, right? We talked about that in our definition for statistical question. And two, we're going to be answering that question by collecting data. Again, just to remind ourselves, that variability is going to be based on the differences in a population. A non-statistical question anticipates a single response, and that could either be a yes or no answer or just a single answer, right? So how tall are you is a non-statistical question because there's only one answer for that. But if you were asking a group of people how tall they were and you were collecting data, 
that would be a statistical question because it's going to have variability. So this tree map kind of lays it out very visually, very nicely, so you can see the differences. But we need an example. So let's take a look at an I do problem. This goes back to the question we talked about, right? How tall are students in the class or how tall are you? So our I do problem says using the attributes of statistical and non-statistical questions, organize these questions as either statistical or non-statistical. So here we have our tree map. Our topic is questions. We have two different types of questions and we want to sort this as either a statistical question or a non-statistical question. Our first question says, how tall are you? Okay, so when you're answering that question, are you anticipating a single response? Are you anticipating a wide range of responses? Well, hopefully when you ask yourself that, you know how tall you are, right? So this is a non-statistical question because there's only one answer to this question. I'm six foot one. But if you change the question and say, okay, how tall are the students in your class? This is now a statistical question. One, because you're gonna have to collect a lot of different data. And two, because there's going to be variability in the answers that people give you. The students are going to be your population, right? So you're going to see a natural variation of your answers just because we know not all students are the same height. Now for how tall are you, you are going to have to collect data for that, right? You might have to go measure yourself, but you're not doing a population of people or a group of things that's going to give you that natural variation. So here we have a really good example of two questions that are similar. They're both at they're both asking about height, but one is a statistical question and one is a non-statistical question. Let's do another we do problem. So my first question says, do you exercise? And the second question says, how many hours do the people who live on your street exercise? Well, hopefully by now you're kind of getting the point. This is going to be a non-statistical question because you're anticipating one response, either yes or no, right? You're only asking one person. Whereas for this one, you're going to be going down your street and asking a bunch of different people, collecting data. And again, the population is gonna provide your variation in your data because I'm sure some people work out zero hours, some people might work out 10 hours, some people might work out five hours, right? Not everybody's different. So the population is going to be providing the variation, which makes this a statistical question. We can expect variation in our data that we're collecting, and it's gonna be a natural variation, again, because it's created by asking different people the same question. So here we have a U-Try problem. Okay, we have four different questions here. Again, these are in your notes, so you can kind of write them underneath. And what I want you to do is pause the video, check your understanding, try to solve it, and then push play when you're ready, check your work. So hopefully you just paused it, and now you're checking your work. So my first question says, how much does your dog weigh? All right, well, there's only one answer to that question. My dog weighs 35 pounds, right, or 23 pounds. It's anticipating one response. So this is a non-statistical question. How long are the roller coasters at Carowinds Amusement Park? This is a statistical question because, oops, this is kind of longer than I thought. I'll have to put it down here. This is a statistical question because there's multiple roller coasters at the amusement park. You have to go around and collect data for each one. And because not all the rides are the same, there's going to be a natural variability to the data that you collect. My third question says, how long is the ride Fury 325 at Carowinds? Now, some of you might think it's 325, but that's the height, not how long the roller coaster is. This is a non-statistical question. Yes, you might have to go collect data to get it. You might have to measure but there's only one answer to this question. There won't be any variability because it's just one ride and you're asking how long is that ride? That's the difference between this question and the one we just put under the statistical limb of our tree map. And then our last one says, what year was your father born? Again, this is a non-statistical question because we're anticipating only one answer. You're asking one person, what year was your father born? There's only one answer to that question. There won't be any variability. So hopefully in this lesson, you were able to kind of see the difference between statistical and non-statistical questions. And even though some of them seemed similar, you can kind of look at, okay, am I asking a population of people? Am I gonna have that natural variability? Or am I only anticipating one answer? Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options online and we love that you have joined our Instruct Beats family. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. We'd love to have you join us. If you wanna follow us on all our social media accounts, that would be awesome too. Again, thank you so much. Instruct Beats, out.